Let me start off by saying in no way do I condone any form of dishonesty or cheating on professional exams. I think that the right technologies should be in place to counteract any attempt to cheat on professional exams. The title of my talk today is Exam Revocation and Ramifications. The process of taking exams, especially professional exams like the PMP, the CAPM, the ACP, and many more, is a critical step for individuals seeking career advancements and professional growth. I was there back in 05 trying to take my exam for the first time, so I understand what anyone is going through trying to beef up their credentials. In recent times though, a lot of concern, a lot more concern than ever before, have been raised about the proctoring practices of certain testing organizations. And I do want to call one out in particular because they're associated with the PMI and I'm calling out Pearson View. Now, Pearson View is very well known in industry. In fact, if you go to the Pearson View Trust Pilot page, you find that they have an absolutely appalling rating as far as their practices in proctoring is concerned. They have a 1.1 out of 5. That is, in my mind, absolutely despicable for any organization that is involved in people business. This is the people business. And you can read tons and tons of comments about their practices. This first one reads, every online proctor I've dealt with for this company has been ridiculously rude. Haven't been able to take an online exam because there's always some issue that they're never at fault for. Their camera keeps blurring ID and certificate. If you can avoid it, do not use their home online proctor, says another test taker. Their personnel will illogically and abruptly terminate your exam without warning for normal human incidents in the name of policy. Then it will take five business days for them to provide you a resolution, never mind the huge amount of time you took to study or the time you took off to take the exam or the hours spent taking the exam or the money you paid to take the exam. What's the point of a human interface? If all they do is provide lip service to policy and can't use rhyme and reason to find up with a reasonable solution in a timely manner. You know what I always say? I say a proctor needs to have a heart and a brain. And that seems to be largely missing where these proctors are concerned. This poor user said they took my money and then they said, the transaction was rejected and they blocked my account and now I'm not able to schedule a test. There are so many cases I could go on and on but I will save you the heartache from reading these. Now you might wonder which type of organization does this? Do they not have any remorse or any respect for human life, for human beings? Because these are the things that trigger people these are the things that make people so depressed. You have no idea what it takes to study for an exam that has a monumental amount of content. It has 756 pages, plus another 300 plus pages, plus another 200 plus pages, not to mention tons more information. Let's not even talk about process groups or practice guide. So whether it's the PMP or the CAPM or other exams, these are taking a toll on a lot of people. And I want to speak up for those who have been affected. I'm not talking about those who cheated and had an exam revoked. I'm talking about those innocent ones who just get their exam revoked for no good reason. Now, why doesn't Pearson View care, you may say? Well, if you go onto Google, a quick search will tell you their revenue is ranked at 4.4 billion in 2022, that might be a small inkling as to why they probably don't care because they feel they're the big kahuna. But Pearson View, your attitude needs to change because even bigger companies have realized the brunt 
of not caring for their clients and your attitude is despicable and I just want to call it out right now on social media and put you on blast to put enough fire under you for you to do something about this because it is unfair it is not a human way of responding to your clients and if you're listening to this and joking and find it funny it's sad so I hope this video goes all the way to your CEO because I have choice words for your company this is very unfair and you are also making a company that's very near and dear to my heart and many others look like garbage because we are signing up for these very strenuous exams and you are making our organization look bad now I know there's a place for cheats right I understand that but just slapping people around for no apparent reason is very distasteful. You see, talking about reputation and trustworthiness, there's a number of things on my chest I want to talk about today. Let's talk about reputation and trustworthiness. Reputation is of paramount importance for any organization, especially those entrusted with administering high stakes exams like the PMP exam that can significantly influence a, a person's career path. Now, trust pilots won over five score for Pearson View, as I just showed you right here. Let's go back to that despicable score. This just shows you the level of customer service and support that this company renders to their clients or the way it comes across. This could be attributed to several factors. This one out of five. Number one, it obviously includes the unjust revocation of exams, which I just showed you. When several PMP and CAPM students are expressing their grievances and sadness over the exam experience, it raises concerns. Now, some might argue that the existence of numerous complaints implies inherent issues in proctoring processes but it's very crucial for us to analyze the reasons behind these complaints under a microscope to ensure fairness and transparency bear in mind that there's a huge impact to the test takers and I want to speak for the test takers going to my third point here the consequences of having an exam revoked without valid grounds, it could be extremely devastating for test takers. And many of these individuals, they're professionals, they've got busy schedules, they're preparing for these exams, and it requires a significant amount of time and effort and planning. One of my students had to travel from a different country to the United States because his exam was revoked. And he had to travel to take the exam. Another of my students traveled from an island because she was scared of taking the exam there because of the horror stories. So she traveled to take it in a different country. So this requires a lot of effort for some people, but not everyone has the luxury or the funds to travel. You see, having to study for additional weeks or months, like many of my students have, it could be extremely demoralizing, mentally draining, emotionally draining, and it could lead to feelings of acute frustration, self-doubt, and even damage of one's self-esteem. It really breaks my heart to see some of my students so demoralized. I'm glad that a lot of them have recovered and they are now certified, but they didn't have to go through all that pain. These are people who are genuinely working hard only to be told the exam is revoked without warning, sufficient warning. For goodness sake, these exams are not cakewalk exams. These exams are difficult. In fact, these exams are hard to cheat on. They're hard. I'm not saying people don't cheat. They do. But those who cheat, cheat in other ways. So the micromanaging of people coughing or mouthing the words or all that stuff is foolish because you now put people's lives on a two-month hold because it seemed like they were mouthing words on on the exam or it seemed like they were just slightly 
out of frame or they leaned back a little bit, they're still in frame. There's all sorts of stories I've heard. I had a student of mine who is in need of, she's got mobility issues. So imagine someone in a wheelchair, of course, the way they are postured and so on is not going to be the same. You cannot expect people to be robots. They're not robots, as I showed you on that comment. It is so frustrating. The micro, tiny little things that seem to just trigger them to shut down someone's exam. Now, what really got me absolutely upset today was a student at question 135. This student had received absolutely no caution all through the exam, only for the exam to be unceremoniously stopped. And this is the final day, pretty much, that this student can take that test because it changes to a brand new syllabus of greater weight. So, think about it. If you are a leader of such an institution, you need to think about what your people, what your clients are going through. It's very challenging. So as a leading testing organization with substantial reviews, Pearson View absolutely must prioritize ethical accountability in its operations. The sheer scale of their financial success indicates, in my mind, a significant responsibility to uphold the principles of fairness, integrity, and transparency in exam administration. This is what we espouse at the PMI. We espouse fairness. We espouse taking care of your stakeholders. We espouse servant leadership. So how can we be testing such an exam and you are not upholding similar qualities, similar ethics, when the livelihoods and aspirations of students and individuals are at stake, ethical conduct becomes even more critical. Imagine a certification that one needs to go for a job interview and is unable to take that certification or their certification is revoked, the exam is revoked. Think about that. Now, there are two cases I don't want you to mix up. One is the revocation of a certification after enough evidence has been found to prove that that attempt was riddled with deceit or possible, very probable deceit. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about an exam revoked midway for little or no good reason. You coughed. You moved out of frame for a microsecond. You were not looking straight at the, at the camera. You're not a robot. There has to be a margin of tolerance. And I think a lot of these proctors, they're like attack dogs. It's like they've been bred to be wild and aggressive. And that is not good enough. That is very, very poor customer support on Pearson, Pearson's end. And I think they should look into that and do better. But I, I wonder if they care. Perhaps that's the, their recipe in their minds for success. I, I, I don't know. So as a, as a leading organization, I expect better. Pearson, you must prioritize ethical accountability in your operations. You must. It is imperative for Pearson View and similar organizations to implement robust and transparent proctoring practices that minimize the chances of erroneous exam revocations. It's like they don't care. There's absolutely zero tolerance or margin of error. And that is not good enough because humans are not robots. And humans should always be given the benefit of the doubt. Additionally, establishing a clear and fair appeals process can help rectify any potential mistakes, but we're not even talking about the process because usually PMI, in their good nature, realize that Pearson has done it again and left us with, I'll be polite here, I won't use the word, a mess to clean up. But I can't count how many times I've heard that PMI looked into the case and discovered Pearson View, the attack dog, had gone off on a crazy tangent again. 
And now this poor student, even though they've been given another chance, but it's not about being given another chance. It's about all the effort needed all over again to sustain the momentum, getting into the psychological state. And I always say we're dealing with humans. We're dealing with people, humans with flesh and blood, with a brain, with emotions, with great power, it is often said, comes great responsibility. But in this case, with great power and four billion of revenues comes irresponsibility. The low trust pilot scores that we attribute here to Pearson, pathetic scores right here, as you can see, despicable 1.1 out of 5, it suggests the need for reevaluating and improving proctoring practices. I'm sure if I went to the Better Business Bureau, I would probably find something similar. I would probably find another low score. Because there's no smoke without fire. It's not like someone sent a horde of people to rape Pearson badly. And for that reason, let's bring to light those Pearson View BBB scores again. These are the BBB scores for Pearson View, and the picture never lies. They're rated an F. Who, in their right mind, allows their company to consistently be rated an F? People who don't care because they, they feel they're the big kahuna, 1.06 out of five with 122 reviews. And you can read the frustration of this individual. When I say that their software is also out of whack and needs scrutiny, I'm not exaggerating. Just take a look at the pathetic reviews on BBB, Trustpilot, and the internet at large. And you'll know that I'm not just making a fuss. I'm being as fair as I can by not just going by what people associated with me and my organization and the PMI have said, but I'm showing you a spectrum of comments from other entities. In conclusion, I want to make it clear that the ramifications of unjustly revoking a student's exam are far-reaching and they can have severe consequences for us, the test takers, both professionally and emotionally. I really want you to think about the emotional pain and turmoil a lot of us go through. A lot of us go through inconveniences because planning to take such an exam needs the whole family to be on board in many an instance. It needs us clearing out houses with kids who might interrupt and things such as that. I know students that have had to put their family on entire vacation just to make sure they have the house to themselves. So when things like this happen, it's very disconcerting. The low trust pilot scores, the low BBB scores attributed to Pearson it just tells us that there needs to be a reevaluation and improving proctoring practices. As an organization that is entrusted with high stakes exams, Pearson View, you must prioritize ethical accountability to maintain reputation and trust of your clients. Implementing fair and transparent proctoring practices along with a robust appeals process will ensure that take test takers like me are treated justly and that our hard work and dedication is respected. Not only that, there also needs to be a robust training program in place to overhaul the poor pathetic customer support or lack of support, should I say, in many an instance, because that's not how you show support by talking to people anyhow and rebuking them as if they're five-year-olds. Ultimately, the goal should be to create an environment where individuals can take exams without fear of unjust repercussions, fostering a positive and supportive learning experience. I really hope someone at Pearson does listen to this and make a difference.
For those of you that are PMP, CAPM, ACP test takers, my advice to you as at today, July 2023, is for you to absolutely avoid taking any tests at home. The same thing for any other exam where there is proctoring services from Pearson at home, it is a little bit attractive, but deceptively so, because you might wind up like other students of mine who have had to reboot, retool, and take the exam again. I actually had a student who on her third attempt finally got round to having a hitch-free exam because all the other attempts either had a hitch or a discontinuation. A word is enough for the wise.